Hello, welcome to uh, Neuropathology. I'd recommend that you have a firm grasp of neuroanatomy before embarking upon our lecture series together here in Neuropathology. We'll begin our topic by looking at stroke. The stroke itself, in general, as we go through the various uh, uh, categories, third leading cause of death. So it's no joke. Now, as we go through stroke, I'm going to give you some differentials, things that you want to keep in mind, as we've been doing throughout the entire course. Here, you want to be able to uh, differentiate between a stroke versus a transient ischemic attack. And the reason for that is because the symptoms that the patient is going to present will be quite similar, won't they? However, the time course is extremely different. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, how did the stroke take place? How is there decreased blood supply taking place to the brain in which all of a sudden you've lost your functioning? Well, if it is transient ischemic attack, well, usually now define it as being stroke-like symptoms that last maybe approximately 15 minutes, maybe about an hour, maybe about 24 hours. But then the symptoms go away and the patient comes back to being normal. For example, a family, husband and wife, sitting in a living room watching TV, and they're watching their favorite show, maybe perhaps uh, Full House. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the husband is having a hard time uh, with vision, having a hard time speaking, slurred speech, and really is having a hard time getting out of his recliner. The wife gets extremely concerned, and so therefore go to the doctor, and only to come to find out that in a very transient amount of time, maybe less than an hour, all the symptoms go away. That's transient ischemic attack. The symptoms are extremely similar to stroke, aren't they? But it goes away. However, what you need to keep in mind is that this is a risk factor for a stroke or impending stroke about to happen. And so therefore, you need to be quite aggressive with your patient to make sure that if it is a microemboli that is being set off into the circulation of the brain, that it has to be treated appropriately. The pathophys, now 85% of strokes that do occur are of ischemic nature, whereas 15% could be hemorrhagic, and therefore our time and your time should be focused upon ischemic, and then to make sure that we're complete, I'll give you a proper definition of a hemorrhagic stroke. Now with ischemic stroke, what we'll do here is divide it into focal versus our global. What do you mean by focal? Well, focal means that you have an individual blood vessel that is undergoing some type of compromise of blood flow to the brain. How did it occur? Oh, maybe the patient had uh, some type of thrombi formation taking place in the heart, secondary to, let's say, atrial fibrillation. And if you remember, atrial fibrillation would be one of the criteria for developing a thrombi and, in essence, the Virchow triad. Imagine now that you have a thrombus formation taking place in the left atrium. What may then happen? At some point in time, if there is, let's say, a fib, then the thrombi will break off, you embolize into left ventricle, and there you go. And 10% of the time, you might end up in the carotids. And if you do, focally, you might then embolize and create an ischemic type of stroke. It could be embolic, meaning artery to artery, or maybe the patient started having a DVT. Maybe it was a female who was obese and was smoking, also taking uh, estrogen therapy, develops a deep vein thrombosis. But how is that going to result in having a stroke, which is on the systemic side? Obviously, there has to be communication taking place from the systemic veins to the systemic artery. So you begin with a deep vein thrombosis, think of that please. You will then embolize to the right side of the heart and then maybe there is an atrial septal defect. And so therefore paradoxically, you will then embolize to the left side and end up in your focally a blood vessel bringing about stroke-like symptoms. So more topic, ischemic stroke, specifically focusing upon one blood vessel at a time how did it become pathological is the question that we're answering, aren't we? About thrombotic. Once again, you have a thrombus formation, but this time it's not in the deep vein of your leg, nor is it in the left atrium. 
but maybe it's actually taking place in a blood vessel in uh, the brain due to, well, years have gone by and the patient has hyperlipidemia, so atherosclerosis. And there might be atherosclerosis, therefore causing decreased blood flow perfusion to the brain. Or a combination of lipohyalinosis. What does that mean to you? You know what hyalin is, an aggregation of protein. Oftentimes, you know that a patient may have hypertension and diabetes mellitus at the same time. And so therefore, lipohyalinosis. What's happening here? There is a thrombus formation taking place in your blood vessel, and therefore resulting in decreased blood supply to the brain giving our patient, unfortunately, a focal cerebral type of ischemic stroke. Or the patient has vasculitis. And by vasculitis, we refer to something like, oh, oh temporal arteritis, you've heard it before. Arteritis, or oh, maybe something like your uh, granulomatosis with polyangitis, formerly known as Wagner. Microscopic polyangitis, you get the point. Or even, even something like IgA vasculopathy, formerly known as Hanox Shanlein purpura. All of those conditions have one in common. They're causing inflammation in the blood vessel. Huh. Then what then happens to the caliber of the lumen? Oh, it's getting compromised. This is not good. May result in what? Good. A focal type of ischemic stroke. Are you seeing this now? Or it could be cryptogenic. In other words, not exactly sure as to what the cause is. So on this side, it'll be focal type. And then on this side, globally, what may happen? Well, globally, your patient may be suffering from hypotension. Globally versus focally. So if the entire body is undergoing hypotension, then there's going to be decreased blood supply, obviously, to the brain. Once again, causing an ischemic type of stroke, but this is global in nature. Keep that in mind.